Today, I'm gonna to be putting some horror movies on your radar for 2024. Now, I don't know if any of these dates are going to stay the same, obviously. This is just what's been announced thus far. And I don't know if any of these have or will be affected by the writer's strike. I, well, I know a couple of them have. I gotta say, next year proves to be full of original horror and I could not be more excited about some of the titles that are coming next year. That's not to say we don't get remakes or sequels or reboots or franchise stuff. There's some of that in here too. Now some of these I'm sure will go straight to streaming but not all countries get the same movies at the same time so if you want to ensure that you're one of the first people to catch these releases when they come out then make sure you get NordVPN before next year which happens to be the sponsor of today's video. Now NordVPN allows you to unlock any country's streaming service selection, including movies, TV shows, even if it's not streaming where you're located in your country. They make it super simple to connect anywhere with just a single click, and then you have access to movie streaming all over the world, and this will help you access those first releases next year. Also, you can share your passwords and your accounts across multiple households without paying that extra fee. Now, obviously, that is a really helpful feature, especially for movie lovers, but they don't just do this. They help protect your data and privacy through their threat protection, which is always running in the background, even if you're not connected to a VPN server. This conceals your IP address and protects your virtual location as well as block malware and cyber attacks. And you can use one NordVPN account on up to six devices so all of your devices are protected and you can stream anywhere, anytime, no matter where you are. So make sure you go to nordvpn.com slash possessed by horror to get a two-year plan with a huge discount plus four bonus months for free and it's completely risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. So like I mentioned a lot of these movies are at various stages of production and I try to go in order as to when we can expect them. And a lot of them have no info whatsoever, like they've been announced, but they're either in pre-production or they've just been announced and there's really no progress being made. So a lot look like this where there's just no nothing. There's nothing known about it. So I didn't include those because you can just Google those yourself, but I tried to find ones that had some kind of piece of information that could actually get us to have some kind of expectation or some excitement about the announcements. First up is a movie that will be released at the very beginning of the year, and that is Night Swim. This comes out on January 5th. The trailers are already out for this one, or at least like a short trailer. I believe it's showing in theaters as well before some movies. This follows a woman who is swimming in her pool at night and is terrorized by an evil spirit. It seems to be like a haunted swimming pool, which is definitely a new one. I don't think I've ever heard of that. <laughs> it also possibly looks like a single location movie, which could be exciting. There's There are movies that take place in pools, like horror movies, thriller movies that take place in pools. That's not really anything new, but to have it be supernatural like this and to have it be a ghost, a pool ghost, that's that's new. So this is a Blumhouse movie. This is made by Blumhouse. There's a lot of Blumhouse movies coming out this year. They seem to be doing a little bit more quantity over quality, in my opinion. Also, Night Swim is rated PG-13, which really doesn't faze me. I know some will see that as a negative. It's a supernatural one. It's a ghost. It's a ghost, so PG-13 is just fine for me. Now, this is directed by Bryce McGuire and written by Rod Blackhurst. And I can't remember which one... I think it was the writer said that this is inspired by basically his life. He grew up in Florida and he was constantly surrounded by water and you would constantly hear about drownings taking place um, in various forms of water. And so he kind of created this story and it was actually a short first that went kind of viral on YouTube. You can find it on YouTube. And then they sold the rights to James Wan's company in order to make the full feature length film. They describe it as an epic supernatural mythology with a gothic fairy tale undercurrent for the story's sinister swimming pool. So a supernatural mythology gothic fairy tale in a pool. Sounds interesting, I don't know. My first impression of it, it does seem to be a little bit like a Blumhouse movie. <laughs> That's an easy way to sum it up. But basically a little bit cheesy, you know, not a whole lot going on. It doesn't look like it from the trailers, but maybe there's a whole black backstory to it. Who knows? Let me know though, are you excited for Night Swim? I mean, it's a cool concept. I love me a supernatural movie. So the fact it's in a pool, which is, you know, a creepy setting in and of itself when it's at night, 
it could be interesting. Next up, we have a movie that I think a lot of people are going to be very excited about, and that is Lisa Frankenstein coming out on February 9th. Now, this is a horror comedy that is written by Diablo Cody, who famously made Jennifer's Body, and it's directed by Zelda Williams, who is the daughter of Robin Williams, who is one of my favorite people to ever exist on this planet. So because it's a comedy, hopefully that, you know, they got a little bit of that humor in there. Obviously, she's not her father, so it's going to be completely different probably, but it's kind of cool to see her directorial debut and see what she can do. And I love that she picked kind of a horror comedy for this. This is a coming of rage love story about a teenager and her crush who happens to be a corpse. After a set of horrific circumstances bring him back to life, the two embark on a journey to find love, happiness, and a few missing body parts. Now on paper, I'm not gonna lie, doesn't sound like my kind of movie. I mean, it's a comedy, there's love, a love story, and it's set in the 80s. Those are three things that really I don't love, especially mixed with horror. Not really my favorite. However, I am intrigued and I will be seeing this one. Maybe in, in theaters, maybe not, I don't know. But because of who's behind it with Diablo Cody and Zelda Williams, I'm really interested. And the trailer, you know, it looks about what you think a movie like this would be. And then the name of the movie I think is really funny, Lisa Frankenstein, it's a play on Lisa Frank and you know, Frankenstein. It looks pretty goofy, but it could be good. I don't know. But I do think a lot of people are going to be excited about that one because it's just like a lighthearted, fun kind of love story comedy. Next up, we have a movie called Imaginary. Uh, you guessed it, by Blumhouse, comes out March 8th. I will give Blumhouse credit. They usually do original stories. So at least there's that. They're not always the best executed, in my opinion. It does depend on the crew, of course. Blumhouse is just a category of like production company and you know Jason Blum often produces them they're they are kind of a, a archetype type of horror genre in my opinion. So when Jessica returns to her childhood home with her family, she finds her old stuffed bear Chauncey and that her stepdaughter Alice has grown attached to it. After Alice's behavior becomes concerning and the games that she and Chauncey play turn increasingly sinister, Jessica starts realizing that Chauncey is much more than the stuffed bear she believed him to be for all those years. I honestly, I, this one I don't really have an open mind about. It doesn't look great. I don't think there's anything that horrific about a stuffed bear, like a stuffed animal bear. Now the director and writer of this is Jeff Wadlow and he made Cry Wolf, which I really like. It's a great ha Halloween movie. Um, it's from 2005. I love that movie, but he also made Fantasy Island and Truth or Dare. So not a great resume. There's like one in there that I like. He makes cheesy stuff, okay? He makes really cheesy, really kind of bad things. And even Cry Wolf is cheesy. I'm not discounting that. It's just the era that I love, you know. Anyway, I don't know that I'll see this in theaters. I might wait for streaming on this one. And I'm hoping it'll be released on streaming, but Blumhouse typically makes it to theaters, so we'll see. Next, we have The First Omen that comes out April 5th. A young American woman is sent to Rome to begin a life of service to the church, but encounters a darkness that causes her to question her faith and uncovers a terrifying conspiracy that hopes to bring out the birth of an evil incarnate. Now this one's really interesting because it is actually an Omen sequel. I mean, as the title suggested, you probably guessed that already when I said the title, The First Omen. Uh, it takes place after the events of The Omen from 1976. I actually have not seen the original Omen, but I do like the remake with Julia Stiles. I think that movie's really good. Now we usually get at least one or two uh, possession religious horror movies. So this is one of them. There's another one coming. And I do see them every time. It's kind of like a running thing with my partner and I. We see all the cheesy possession movies. I don't know if this one, I mean, it is a, you know, it's a possession movie. It's an evil, a, de a devil religious movie. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> anyway, I haven't seen many people talk about this one, but because it's a sequel to The Omen, which is such an iconic horror movie, I am thinking that once this is like get a bigger, once this gets a bigger announcement, people will be excited for it. Speaking of possession slash religious horror movies, Immaculate coming April 25th. Now this is a psychological horror movie and this follows a devoutly religious woman named Cecilia who is offered a role at an illustrious convent in the Italian countryside side. Her seemingly picture-perfect new home is soon revealed to hold horrifying secrets. Now this one's interesting um, because it stars Sydney Sweeney as the devoutly religious woman, which no offense to her, but that just seems like a really strange role compared to the other roles that she's played. So um, again, open mind. So because it is a devoutly religious 
woman that moves to the countryside, I have a feeling it's going to be demonic in some way, a little bit possession mate, I don't know. Um, it doesn't seem like a typical supernatural ghost haunted house type of story if there's a religious background there. Now this one is in post-production, so they've finished filming. Um, and also Sydney Sweeney is producing this movie as well. Next is a movie I am very, very excited about with a very large open mind and high expectation, to be honest. And that is The Watchers coming June 7th. Now, the reason why I'm so excited about this is Shauna Knight Shyamalan. Does that name sound familiar? Ishana is M. Knight's daughter, and she, this is her directorial debut, and M. Knight is, of course, producing it. They're working together on it, and I'm excited for it. This is a supernatural horror based on a book, so we'll see. They have source material to work with there. This follows Mina, a 28-year-old artist, as she gets stranded in an extensive immaculate forest in Western Ireland. After finding shelter, she becomes trapped alongside three strangers stalked by mysterious creatures each night. I read a little bit more about this movie in the synopsis on IMDb, and I don't know if that's supposed to be the twist or not, or if it actually ha I haven't read the book, so I don't know. Um, but there's more to it than that, and it sounds so cool. Like, the concept sounds great. It's very M. Night Shyamalan. This is starring Dakota Fanning and Georgina Campbell from Barbarian. I'm excited to see them in it. And it was filmed in Ireland, which is going to be beautiful. It's a forest psychological thriller with M. Night on it. What could be better? That sounds like such a good time to me. Another highly anticipated one, I think for most people, I actually am looking forward to it as well because I've wanted this since they released the first one and that is A Quiet Place Day One. Now this is said to come out on June 28th and this is a spin-off prequel to the original one. So completely different cast and probably a little bit of a different story but it's basically the prequel to the movies. So, I mean, we have kind of gotten a peek into what the origin was like, but I've always wanted a movie dedicated to the beginning of the apocalypse with A Quiet Place. I think that has just, that, I just think that's a perfect recipe. <laughs> I like that they take place like in the middle of it, you know, once everything's established, but I've always loved a good apocalypse movie where it takes place at the very beginning and you see things unfold. Now, John Krasinski is still producing this movie, but he's not directing it or writing it, so, I'm not sure how that will go. I'm sure some people will see a difference. Maybe it's a good thing for some people. I know A Quiet Place movies aren't always for everyone. Like not everyone loves them. They do lean a little bit more thriller than horror to me. But I have definitely come to grow to love the Quiet Place movies. I didn't at first. I really, I like the second one more, which I think is controversial, um, but I didn't love them when I first saw them, and now I do like them. Now, Michael Sarnaski is directing this, who also directed Pig with Nic Nicolas Cage, and that was a really great movie. I really loved that one, so, you know, high hopes with the director. Lupita Nyong'o is starring in it. I think she'll be the lead, and then also Alex Wolf. Again, very exciting, great cast. This movie has been pushed back three times, so I'm sure one of those times was because of the writer's strike. Hopefully this time is the last time and it will actually be releasing on June 28th. Okay, <laughs> next movie, it makes me laugh because there's no need for me to put this in this video, but I love these kind of corny, stupid movies. Well, sometimes, don't quote me on that, but sometimes I do like a good stupid movie. The reason why I like this one it's, it's horoscopes, it's zodiacs, anyway. It's called Horrorscope. 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 Uh, June 28th as well. Now this is actually based on a book from the 80s. And this story follows a group of college friends who after getting their horoscopes read, begin dying in ways connected to their fortunes. Are their fates fatal or can they change what's written in the stars? So this one's gonna be bad. I can, I just, I've seen enough movies in my life, especially horror movies, that I can just predict when things are going to be bad. Now, would this be something that's such a good time or like so bad it's good? Maybe. It could be. It could definitely lean more that way where it's bad at first and then for some reason I crave a rewatch. Who knows? Now, the reason why I know it's going to be really bad, not only the concept, it's so silly, right? Spencer Cohen uh, is the writer on this and he also wrote Moonfall. I don't even think I need to explain that, but Moonfall is one of the worst movies I have ever seen in my life. So no high hopes for this one. I am going in with very minimal expectations. I just wanna have a good time. I wanna see the horoscopes and how they die based on their horoscope. That sounds like fun. Okay, the next movie is so strange to me that we're already getting a, a remake. I feel like we don't need one. We don't need one. Speak no evil. 
is being remade this year or next year. It's supposed to come out August 9th. Um, this is a remake of the 2022 Danish movie, which is one of the most disturbing movies I've ever seen. I included it in my horror iceberg. Again, this is Blumhouse. I know. That's... I don't know that I want Blumhouse to do this one because I just feel like this script or the story is so powerful and like it's a lot. So I don't know what Blumhouse is going to do with that. But again, it's just a production company. Doesn't really mean anything because this movie is directed by James Watkins, who also directed The Woman in Black and Eden Lake. I didn't even know those were directed by the same people. And also he directed and made the episode Shut Up and Dance in Black Mirror, which is a really good episode. So because of who's directing it, I do have high hopes for it. And again, I don't know if I, I, I want to watch it. I really do. But because of the content in it, I don't know if I can. So I'll try my best for you guys <laughs> next year and maybe do a little comparison. I won't ever rewatch the original because it's very intense. I don't know how intense they're going to make the remake. Another thing that has me excited is the cast. It stars James McAvoy from Split and Mackenzie Davis. I like both of them. I think, I think based on that information, it'll be good but it's a remake, so you have to kind of like tread lightly. I don't know how they're gonna, what they're gonna do with it. We have a franchise release and that is Alien Romulus, which is coming out August 16th. This is going to be directed by Fede Alvarez, who did Evil Dead, the remake, the 2013 remake, and Don't Breathe. I like one of those. I like Evil Dead. Don't Breathe, it's okay. It's a, it's all right. Now, Alien Romulus will be the ninth Alien movie in the entire franchise. However, this will be a standalone movie and will have nothing to do with the plot of the rest of the franchise. But apparently this does take place between Alien 1 and Aliens, the second movie. And this follows young people from a distant world that must face the most terrifying life force in the universe. If you look at the cast, they're all young people. So it's going to be probably young people. It'd be cool if they were on a ship, you know, like the original Alien. Um, I don't know. It says from a distant world, maybe it takes place on another planet, like a, another universe, not universe, another galaxy, maybe, I don't know. Now, it was said that this was originally going to be straight to streaming on Hulu, but it was announced that it will have a theatrical release. I hope to see it, honestly. I like the Alien franchise, um, and I like that it's younger people. Maybe it's like a, a teen version of the Alien movies, which I, I would be okay with. Next is probably my most anticipated base, well, Maybe the second most anticipated. The based on this list of everything that's been announced, this is by far my top two most anticipated horror movies of 2024, and that is Smile 2. Now we're going to get this around October 18. We don't know anything about it, nothing about the plot, where it's gonna go uh, as a sequel. It does have the same director as the original Smile, though, so hopefully it's the same tone and fun. Although I don't know if it's going to be as impactful as the first one because the reveal in the end, you know, that was just so powerful. I don't know if they can replicate that. I, I'm excited for it, but I am gonna be a little bit weary about how they, like what they do with it, where they take it. Next up, we have Terrifier 3. October 25th is when that's coming out. It has been confirmed it's a Christmas movie, but it's coming out for Halloween. Now, obviously, Terrifier 3 has started controversy, um, not only just in the horror community, but on my channel, because I told you guys in my last video I will not be watching it if the teaser proves that he kills that child in the teaser. You can go watch that video if you want my full explanation on that and how I justify that. Um, again, I'm waiting for the movie to come out before I'm fully making my decision whether or not I'm going to watch Terrifier 3. Now, the director, Damien Leone, uh, did turn down multiple studio offers to finance this film. He likes to finance his own movies because that lets him do whatever he wants. Now, after the unexpected success of Terrifier 2, studios did approach him wanting to work with him on Terrifier 3, but he thought that they would not allow him to film his opening scene for Terrifier 3 if they were on board. So he would just rather finance them himself so he can do the scene that he wants to do, which is why he says is very controversial. I don't know in what capacity, but that's why people are assuming that he kills the child in the teaser trailer. There's also theories that that child is Sienna and it's like a dream or something. I don't know. It does follow Sienna. Like she is still a character in the movie and her brother. So they're continuing with that storyline. I think because Terrifier 2 was so successful and they saw that people wanted a hero. So they're, you know, we're rooting for Sienna. Like I said, I'm waiting until it comes out before I make any strong opinions about it. But based on that, 
I don't know. He wants to do, if, if it's more intense than Terrifier 2, I don't know guys. I don't know if I could do it, okay? Don't hold it against me, please. So the last movie that has an official release date, which I think will change because we don't know anything about this. And then the rest of the video is going to be things that are supposed to come out in 2024. They just don't have a release date yet. But the last one that does have a release date, allegedly, is an untitled Jordan Peele project. This is supposed to come out December 25th on Christmas next year. I don't know, I don't know. There's nothing about it, as far as I know. As of right now, when I'm filming this, there's no info. I don't know. I don't know what it's gonna be about. I'm always down for a Jordan Peele movie though. If he wants to make one next year, I will be there. Okay, continuing with the movies that have been completed, just no release date yet. First up, we have The Home. Now this follows Max who realizes that the residents and caretakers in the retirement home he started working at hide sinister secrets. Um, this stars Pete Davidson as the lead, which is going to either make people excited or not so excited. Some people love him, some people hate him, some people love to hate him. So let me know where you fall on that with Pete Davidson. I don't really have an opinion. <laughs> this is directed by James DeMonico, who made some of the Purge movies, including the original Purge. So I have a theory that this movie is gonna lean a little bit more action-y than true horror. And I don't know if it's going to be supernatural at all, or if it's just gonna be the elderly? I don't know. I did a whole video on, uh, you know, the elderly in horror and how they're kind of exploited as an age group. Um, so I hope they don't go like too much that route and there is something, some kind of explanation there. Okay, the next one I think is going to be most people's anticipated trilogy for 2024, and that is The Strangers. Now, chapter one has been completed, and chapter two and three are in post-production. All three are supposed to come out in 2024. Now, this is like a spin-off reboot type of thing with the franchise. Is it a franchise? We've only had two. I think Pray at Night is better than the original. I know. We'll see about these. Uh, I don't Listen, I haven't rewatched the original in a long time, but it's not my favorite. Maybe I'd be more effective now because home invasions are a little bit scarier to me now. It's messed up, it's a messed up movie. Um, but I like the fun aspect of Pray at Night. Anyway, so this one will be like different people, obviously, and like just a wider expansion of the universe that is The Strangers. So a young couple drives across the country to begin a new life together in the Pacific Northwest, and along the way, their car breaks down and they're forced to spend the night in an isolated Airbnb house in Oregon. Through the night, they are terrorized by three masked strangers. I wonder if they'll follow the same motivation as the original movie, um, and I, I think this one is going to be good. I might even separate it in my head from the original ser series franchise. I don't know, the original two. And just make it its own thing in my head. Because it sounds like it's going to be a great setting. I love a good house in the middle of nowhere. Especially in the Pacific Northwest. Madeline Petch is going to be, I think, in all three. Or she, I think they said all three. Which to me is like a little spoiler. I don't really know. If not, if that's, if I'm completely making that up. Then she's at least in the first one. Okay, I lied. Next, the next movie is going to be mine and all of yours, I'm sure. And everyone's most anticipated anticipated horror movie of 2024, Maxine, finally. Maxine, of course, is going to be the sequel to X, and Pearl was a prequel to X, so it'll be like the third movie in that series of, you know, in that storyline. I'm so excited for it, obviously. I love X and I love Pearl. I don't think I'm going to love Maxine as much as either of those. I like Pearl more than X. I don't think I'm gonna like Maxine as much, to be honest. One of the reasons it's set in the 80s. Again, not my favorite era, uh, and I'm kind of tired of the 80s. But of course, this is directed by Ty West again. It's going to be under A24. It's going to star Mia Goth as Maxine. Like, what is not to love about that recipe? He's done it before. He'll do it again. I'm sure it's going to be fine. And this, of course, will take place after the events of X as Maxine moves to Los Angeles to become an actress in the 80s. The next one is one that I am so excited about, and I think maybe a handful of you will be, but it's not going to be like a, a mainstream excitement, but I love these movies so much, uh, and video games, even though I've never played them. Return to Silent Hill. This is in post-production, and this is going to be an adaptation of Silent Hill 2, the video game. When a mysterious letter calls him back to Silent Hill in search of his lost love, James finds a once recognizable town and encounters terrifying figures, both familiar and new, and begins to question his own sanity. Now, this kind of sounds like the OG storyline of the video games of Silent Hill, so I think 
this one will be better than maybe the original. I don't know, maybe. I think the original is so good. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's in my top 30 movies of all time, I know. And this is directed by Christoph Gans, who made the original. So he's coming back to direct this one, which is why I have high hopes for it. Next up, another one that is highly, highly anticipated. As soon as the cast was announced for this, I saw everyone going nuts over it, and that is Nosferatu. Now this is a Robert Eggers movie, who of course made The Light House and The Witch. One of those I like, one of those I, actually he also made The North Man too. I liked The North Man, I don't like The Lighthouse. So he's a little bit hit or, hit or miss for me, but he has really good artistic vision. I appreciated the artistic vision in The Lighthouse, don't get me wrong. And I am excited for this. Now this has been a project that's been in the works for years and years with Robert and you know, it's just one of his passion projects. So it's finally going to be made. It's in post-production now. Now the cast, Bill Skarsgård, Lily Rose Depp, Willem Dafoe, Nicholas Holt, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Now, Anya Taylor-Joy was supposed to be in this. She was cast in this movie, but she had to drop out due to scheduling conflicts, which is really, really disappointing because I really like Anya Taylor-Joy. And I don't know if Lily Rose Depp came in after to take the same you know, role that Anya was supposed to take, um, but I probably would have preferred Anya if that's the case. <laughs> Nosferatu is a gothic tale of obsession between a haunted young woman and the terrifying vampire infatuated with her, causing untold horror in its wake. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. I have no doubts about it. Um, I think it's gonna be good <laughs> with the cast. The director, again, hit or miss, but he's talented. So I, I have high hopes with the source material of Nosferatu. All of it, it just sounds, it sounds good. Next up we have Witchboard, which is a movie in post-production. This is a horror mystery supernatural movie that is based on a remake, or it's a remake of a 1986 movie of the same name. This follows Emily, her fiance Christian, and their group of friends who have opened a new organic cafe in the French Quarter of New Orleans by renovating an old carriage house. However, things take a dark turn when Emily finds an ancient pendulum board that was once used for summoning spirits. It seems pretty straightforward. I don't know. I don't really know anything about it besides that. That's that's what I know about that. I don't really have any opinion about it either. You could watch the original movie if you want more information about it and, you know, to, to see the source material of the remake. Finally, this is the last movie we're gonna talk about. Again, not the only, it's not the last movie announced in the year. There's lots coming next year, I'm sure, and some big big titles we probably don't even know about yet. But lastly that we're gonna talk about today is The Conjuring Last Rites. This I almost didn't even put in this video because it is in pre-production status right now. And if it does come in 2024, it's gotta be rushed. It's probably not gonna be good if that's the case. And it's gonna be at the end of the year, if at all. I think this is going to be a 2025 movie. There's nothing known about this at all. There's no plot summary or anything. They say it takes place um, after Conjuring 2013, I don't think it will. And it says that Taisa and Vera Farminga and Patrick Wilson are set to return. That doesn't make sense to me timeline wise. I think they're just generally attached to this franchise. So people are just saying that. That's what IMDb says anyway. I don't know. That's just, I don't think that they're all going to be in it. Anyway, I thought I'd throw it in there in case The Conjuring is one of your favorite franchises, just to keep it on your radar, but I do think it'll be pushed to 2025. So there you have some of my most anticipated horror movies coming out in 2024, the big names that we know of thus far. I would love to know what you're excited about, if you've heard of any other new releases besides these ones. Um, but yeah, if you had to pick one movie that you're so excited about from this video that's been announced for 2024, what is it gonna be? Leave a comment down below. I hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.